Leading the platform party are Dr. Seth Meehan and the Reverend James F. Keenan of the Society of Jesus, Chief Marshals of the Platform, and Anne Riley Fink, President of the Boston College Alumni Association. Now processing are the deans of the schools and colleges of the university. Entering next are the Provost and Dean of Faculties, Vice Presidents, and Senior Administrators of Boston College. Approaching the platform now are the members of the Board of Trustees and Trustee Associates of the University. Processing next are our 2017 honorary degree candidates. Amy Chin Goon, escorted by Gautam Yadama, Dean of the School of Social Work. Tiffany Cooper Guy, escorted by Stanton Wortham, Dean of the Lynch School of Education. Christopher O'Donnell, escorted by Beth McDermott, Vice President for Development. Father Leo B. Shea, Marinol Missioner, escorted by John Zona, Chief Investment Officer and Associate Treasurer. Processing now are His Eminence Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Archbishop of Boston, 
and the Reverend Robert L. Keane of the Society of Jesus, Rector of the Jesuit Community. And now, our commencement speaker, the Honorable Robert P. Casey, Jr., Senator for Pennsylvania, escorted by John F. Fish, Chair of the Boston College Board of Trustees, and the Reverend William P. Leahy of the Society of Jesus, President of Boston College. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation. The University Chorale, under the direction of John Finney, will sing the national anthem. Thomas D. Stegman of the Society of Jesus will offer the invocation. Let us pray. Loving, merciful God, we gather this morning in gratitude, joy, and hope as we celebrate the graduation of the Boston College Class of 2017. We pray in gratitude Gratitude for creating each one of us in your image and likeness, for nurturing and guiding us along the way, for the many ways, intellectually, spiritually, and personally, 
we have been formed and transformed. And for all the people who have been instrumental in our growth and formation, upon these, our parents, grandparents, professors, and mentors, we ask your blessing, O loving God. We pray in joy, joy as we call to mind the love, generosity, and sacrifice of all the people who have made this day possible. As we have learned to delight in truth, goodness, and beauty. As we celebrate the many accomplishments in our time at BC. And as we, we reflect upon our experiences and call to mind the friendships we have made. And we pray and hope for our future for the opportunities and challenges that await us. We ask that you always inspire us to employ our talents and intellect, indeed to use all we have received to make the world a better place. Help us to be committed to justice and to peace. Enable us to become agents of transformation for the common good, to be responsible stewards of your creation and to extend your hand of mercy to those most in need. Gracious God, help us to remember and embody the words of the Apostle Paul, who wrote, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, consider these things. Do what you have learned and received, and the God of peace will be with you. We ask these things in your loving name. Amen. Please be seated. William P. Lee of the Society of Jesus, president of Boston College, will now offer his welcoming remarks. Mr. Fish and members of the Board of Trustees, Your Eminence, Cardinal O'Malley, honored guests, particularly Senator Robert Casey from Pennsylvania, our speaker today, and our other distinguished honorary degree recipients, members of the Golden Jubilee Class of 1967 and the Silver Jubilee Class of 1992, members of the Boston College faculty and staff, alumni, parents, guests, and friends, and especially the 2017 graduates of Boston College. Welcome this morning. <laughs> On behalf of the trustees, faculty, and staff, our 177,000 alumni, and the entire university community, I welcome everyone here this morning in Alumni Stadium and those participating via webcast to the 141st commencement of Boston College. Today is a day for appreciation and gratitude and of celebration and promise. First, appreciation and gratitude to today's graduates for all you accomplished as students through your intellectual and personal talents, commitment to service, and abundant energy and creativity. A university like Boston College would become stagnant without the constant influx of the gifts its undergraduate, graduate, and professional students from all around the United States and increasingly from around the whole world bring to campus life. Boston College has been enlivened and strengthened academically, socially, and spiritually during your time here. BC is a better institution 
because of you and your contributions. And it looks forward to maintaining ties with you and sharing in your success. Second, we recognize and thank parents, spouses, family, and friends whose steadfast support, encouragement, and guidance have made such a difference to those graduating from Boston College today. May I ask that the family and friends of those receiving degrees stand to allow the class of 2017, as well as faculty, staff, and others present here, to express our gratitude. So if the parents and friends would please stand. Third, let us thank and celebrate Boston College faculty and administrators whose wisdom, dedication, and wise counsel contributed so much to the intellectual development and personal formation of today's graduates. And finally, we express appreciation to Boston College alumni and friends whose generous gifts of time, advice, and financial resources made it possible for many to graduate today. You graduates of 2017 have witnessed many changes on campus. You were among the first to attend classes in Stokes Hall, a building which reaffirms BC's commitment to the humanities. 2000 Commonwealth Avenue was renovated as a residence hall. The Thomas More Apartments became the new campus home of many graduating today. And Edmonds Hall was raised to make way for a new recreation center to be named after the Connell family. Much has changed since you began at Boston College, and even more since the first students started at BC in 1864. Boston College now stands as one of the world's preeminent universities, ranked 31st among national universities in the United States, and enrolling more than, than 14,000 undergraduate, graduate, and professional students from all around our nation and the world. BC has been blessed. And I know that we live in a world that desperately needs people who are willing and able to engage and help resolve difficult situations. There truly are issues and sometimes daunting problems, but that has been true in every age. And since the founding of the first Jesuit school in Messina, Sicily in 1548, Jesuit education has sought to prepare graduates to be 11 for good in society. People who have the preparation, commitment, and abiding hope necessary for a better tomorrow. I believe you graduates of 2017 have great talent and promise that you will play a critical role in engaging and resolving the troubling issues of our day. I urge that you use your education and service and all the commitments of your life to better society. That you put into practice the principles, values, and beliefs of Jesuit education that continue to shape Boston College and all those issues that we face today. May such phrases as men and women for others and go set the world on fire animate and inspire you as you live and work in the 21st century. May you be beacons of hope and light like the Tower of Gasson Hall at night, giving life, comfort, and example to those around you. And may God continue to bless you and your families. Thank you, and my congratulations.
I will now read the Latin version of the degree that you're receiving today. Curatores Collegii Bostoniensis, Omnibus as Literas Lecturas, Salutem in Domino. Ishe Listris nos ad id muneris, Summa Republicae Massachusettensis Autoritate Delegati, Testamur Delectos Nobis Rite Probatos, Ad Atium Scientiae Educationes Legum Re Socialis Philosophia Theologiae Gratis Fuisse Provectos, Ad Omnibus et Singulis Iuribus et Privilegis, Aristos Grados Pertinentibus. Eos a nobis fuisse donatus. Quod ut omnibus inotescat as litras. Comuni nostro sigillo e presidis huius collegi chirographo munitas. Dedimus in aula nostra academica. Die vicesimo segundo menso maio, maio anno domini bis millesimo Septimo decimo. The candidates for the honorary degrees will now be presented to the president of the university. Amy Chin Goon. Celebrates the 65th anniversary of her work, her graduation from the Boston College School of Social Work this June the first American-born daughter of a merchant family that held education in high regard, she remains, at 93, a tireless advocate in Boston's Chinatown community, a place of birth. This devoted wife, mother, and pioneering social worker was an early proponent of hospice care in Massachusetts, trained professionals as the director of social case work at Uville Hospital, and served on the state's inaugural social work licensing board. She has fought neighborhood displacement by urban renewal and facilitated the establishment of local social service agencies to assist underserved immigrants. Her efforts continue to benefit many through the South Cove Manor Nursing Facilities Foundation, which operates the region's premier elder and rehabilitation facility serving the Asian community, and the South Cove Community Health Center, which offers culturally nuanced health care. A petite powerhouse known as Auntie Amy for her service to Chinatown, she has received Lifetime Achievement Awards from the National Association of Social Workers, Massachusetts chapter, and her undergraduate alma mater, Regis College. When the Chinese Historical Society of New England honored her with its Sojourner Award in 2016, she pledged to continue to work as long as her health permits, inspiring all present. For her zeal, tenacity, and community impact, Boston College bestows on Amy Chin Goon the degree of Doctor of Social Science honoris causa. <laughs> Tiffany Cooper Guy. Tiffany Cooper Guy is head of the Boston based nonprofit Bell, Building Educated Leaders for Life, which offers expanded learning programs to nearly 15,000 students in grades pre K to 12 throughout the United States. Growing up in inner city Boston, she attended public school in an affluent suburb through the Metropolitan Council for Educational Opportunity Program where she learned firsthand that not all children have equal educational opportunities. Ever mindful of that experience, Guy has dedicated her professional life to providing children with access to the life-changing power of a high-quality education. Starting at Bell 
As a tutor in 1998, she became involved in efforts to establish successful after-school and summer programs with an emphasis on academic achievement, confidence building, and community and parental engagement. Named CEO of Bell in 2008, she has led a dramatic expansion of its programs, including development of a partnership model with organizations such as the YMCA. She holds bachelor's and doctoral degrees from Boston College and is recognized as a national expert in out-of-school learning, measurement, and evaluation. Highly respected within her field, she is often sought out to speak at national conferences and has provided testimony before lawmakers in Congress. In recognition of her achievements and unwavering efforts to empower children through education, Boston College confers on Tiffany Cooper Guy the degree of Doctor of Science in Education, honoris causa. Christopher E. O'Donnell. Fame came early to Chris O'Donnell, who made his motion picture debut while still a student in the Carroll School of Management. His performance in the 1990 film, Men Don't Leave, launched an acting career that spans a quarter century, including an award-winning part in Scent of a Woman, starring on Broadway in Arthur Miller's The Man Who Had All the Luck, and for the past eight seasons, portraying enigmatic lead character G. Callen in the hit CBS series, NCIS Los Angeles. <laughs> his talent earned him a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. His values keep him grounded. The youngest of seven, he is widely known as a family man devoted to Caroline, his wife of 20 years, and their five children. A graduate of two Jesuit schools, Loyola Academy in Wilmette, Illinois, <laughs> and Boston College, he uses his celebrity status to serve people in need. An advocate for veterans and the homeless, he received the prestigious Caritas Award from California's St. John's Health Center in Los Angeles. He has endowed a scholarship fund at Boston College and remains close to his alma mater, most recently visiting campus to speak with students about the importance of family and faith. Adhering to his beliefs, Unblinded by the spotlight of Hollywood, Chris O'Donnell leads by example. In recognition of his integrity and achievements, Boston College awards Chris O'Donnell the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Father Leo B. Shea, Marino Missioner. Father Leo Shea has served the world's poor since graduating from Boston College in 1960, first with the Boston College Lay Apostolate Program in Jamaica, and then during a half century of global ministry with the Marino Fathers and Brothers. Educated in a Catholic grammar and high school, he earned a degree in English from Boston College in 1960, and then taught as a volunteer at St. George's College in Jamaica. The following year, he entered the Marino religious community and was ordained five years later. He began a 16-year mission in Venezuela in 1975, living in a shack in the Caracas slum of Nueva Tacuaga, where he preached in the streets and drew strength from liberation theology. In 1983, he became Marino Regional Superior for Venezuela, Colombia, and subsequently the first director of a commission investigating human rights abuses in Venezuela. He returned to the United States in 1991 to serve as Vicar General of Marinol. 
In that role, he helped establish the Marino Lay Mission Association to support missionaries worldwide, as well as the Chinese Seminary Teachers and Formators Project, which has brought 150 Chinese priests and women religious to study in the United States. For his tireless, generous commitment to the poor and disenfranchised, education and human rights, and, and Marino missionaries across the globe, Boston College confers on Father Leo B. Shea, Marino Missioner, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Senator Robert P. Casey, Jr. Robert P. Casey, Jr., the senior United States Senator from Pennsylvania, comes from a family long involved in politics and public service. His father was governor of the state for eight years, and Senator Casey himself served as Auditor General and Treasurer of Pennsylvania before his election to the U.S. Senate in 2006. He is known among his constituents and congressional peers as an effective advocate for children and families and is recognized as one of America's most prominent Catholic politicians. He introduced legislation in support of the Emergency Medical Services for Children program and guided into law a bill to make early learning part of a continuum of education working in concert with the K through 12 system. In the Senate, he was the primary sponsor of the Stephen Beck Jr. Achieving a Better Life Experience Act, which enables families to save through tax advantage savings accounts for their long-term care of loved ones with disabilities. Senator Casey has drawn on his faith during his time in public service beliefs grounded in Jesuit and Catholic education at Scranton Preparatory School, the College of the Holy Cross, and the Columbus School of Law at Catholic University of America. After college, he became a member of the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, serving as a teacher and basketball coach at the Jesu School in inner city Philadelphia. In recognition of his principled and dedicated leadership, during a complex, divisive political time, Boston College awards U.S. Senator Robert P. Casey, Jr. the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. The Honorable Robert P. Casey, Jr., Senator for Pennsylvania, will now address the graduates of the class of 2017. Thank you very much. I know the weather is challenging, and I'm grateful to have this opportunity. I'll try to keep within my time limits. Your Eminence, Cardinal O'Malley, Father Leahy, Board Chair John Fish, Vice Chair Markell, Provost uh, David Quigley, Father Devineau, Honorary Degree Recipients, I feel like I know them by their first names now, Amy, Tiffany, Chris, and Father Shea, faculty and staff, alumni, parents, and family, and of course, the class of 2017. First and foremost, congratulations to the class of 2017. Please give yourselves and your families a round of applause. This is, this is your day, and it's an honor and a privilege for me to share part of this day with you and your families. As a Holy Cross alum, along with my wife, Therese, you can imagine my surprise when Father Leahy asked me to speak. I do, however, have some BC credentials. Let me go through them quickly. My daughter, Elise, received her master's in social work last year from Boston College. The following family members have either attended and graduated or are enrolled. My brother-in-law, Jack, class of 77, my niece Ellen, class of 2012 and a graduate degree in 2016. My nephew Matt, class of 2016. My niece Rosie, class of
class of 2018, my nephew Owen, class of 2019, my niece Emma, class of 2020, my daughter Julia is currently serving in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps with, you guessed it, a BC grad by the name of Megan. And every Tuesday at our Senate caucus lunch, I sit at the same table as a double eagle, Senator Ed Markey. So, I hope, I hope I've established some BC street cred. But I do wanna, <laughs> I do wanna speak directly to the graduates today about one topic, the topic of service. I commend, first of all, the 2017 classes service work. More than half of BC graduating seniors were involved in service activities and Boston College undergraduates typically give 440,000 hours of community service during the academic year. So thank you for your commitment to service. That service, go ahead. That service is consistent with the mission of Boston College. As Father Leahy wrote in his President's Message, and I quote, the history of Boston College is a narrative response to society's calling. Today, the call emanates from a world that has experienced an explosion of knowledge, but not a corresponding growth in understanding. A world that too often lacks trust in leaders and faith in its institutions. Boston College endeavors to educate a new generation of leaders, men and women who will be capable of shaping the future with vision, justice, and charity, with a sense of calling, with concern for all of the human family. Let me tell you one story of inspiration that I experienced. After graduating from college, I spent a year in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, teaching fifth grade and coaching eighth grade basketball at the Jesu School in North Philadelphia. More than 30 years later, I have specific memories of almost every child. The image of one child I'll never forget was of a student enrolled for, who enrolled a few weeks after the semester started. She was a beautiful little girl in an immaculate school uniform, a radiant smile and her hair braided perfectly every day. She was a diligent student who always completed her homework. Now fast forward to 2005, more than 20 years later. I was a candidate for the Senate, and I was told that there was a young woman who would stop by our campaign office. She, was, she worked in the building where the campaign office was. I asked the staff person what her name was, and he said he didn't remember her last name, but her first name was Arkesha, Arkesha Morris. Immediately, a picture of that beautiful fifth grade child came to mind again. Now, at this time, Arkesha was about 33 years old, and I was so happy to see her again. In the, in the intervening years, she had lived through many difficult days. Yet despite a life of struggle and pain, she now worked a second job as a foster parent for several children who had been horrifically, horrifically abused. When we had lunch a few weeks later, I asked her how she did that work. I told her I could not do the daily work that she did with children so hurt, so broken. Without a moment's hesitation, Arkesha looked at me she smiled and she said, sometimes our burdens can become our blessings. Sometimes our burdens can become our blessings. I was so moved and so inspired what she said to me that day. Hers had been a life of heavy burdens and yet she cared for and embraced children who had been the victims of beatings and withering abuse. She taught me so much that day about what it means to serve. And I think on a day like today, we have so many examples on this stage that you just heard about and throughout this audience, examples and inspiring stories 
of service throughout the work here in Boston College and throughout our country. We know that every graduate here today has the ability and the opportunity to serve. And I believe it's true. It is in giving that we receive. As the Jesuits so often remind us, we are summoned by the words from the New Testament, to whom much has been given, much is expected. Now I know some of you may be saying to yourself, well, it's easy for him to say, commit time to service. I've got student debt and a career ahead of me and obligations. I'm not asking you today to commit yourself to a lifetime of service, nor am I asking you to do the most difficult kind of service, for example, in the military or law enforcement. But with only one of three adults in the United States in college today, or getting a college degree, you will have opportunities and advantages that others don't have. Our nation needs you. We need your service in the years ahead. I'm all, all I'm asking, I guess, is that you continue the work that you've done already here at Boston College in your time here. So whether it's service in the military or the ministry, public office or community service, volunteering to help the poor, part-time or full-time, whatever type of service you choose, please make a commitment and remain ever steadfast in fulfilling that commitment. Your labor will bring healing and hope to the least, the last, and the lost. Your faith will fortify you as you bring the bright light of compassion to the darkness that engulfs so many lives. And touched by the quiet strength of our Keisha Morris and others here with us today, your conscience will move you not only to count your blessings, but to use your blessings to help lift the many burdens of our brothers and sisters. As the hymn tells us, we are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We're called to serve one another and to walk humbly with God. So yes, we are called to act with justice and we are called to serve one another. That hymn begins with the words, come live in the light. To our graduates I say, please accept the sacred invitation to live in the light of service. On this commencement day, we pray that in all of your tomorrows, may it be said of you that you answered the call to serve. And may the fire of your faith, nurtured here at Boston College, give you the strength, as Father Leahy wrote, quote, to shape the future with vision, justice, and charity, with concern for all of the human family. May God bless you and those you love this day and always. Thank you. The University Chorale will perform Tolite Ostias, composed by Camille Sanson. Tolite Ostias is the final movement of the Christmas Oratorio by Sanson. Today it is sung by the underclassmen of the chorale as an offering of love and support for all the members of the class of 2017.
There now follows the conferral of degrees in course in the order at the foundation of the schools. The dean of each school will present the degree representative to the president for the conferral of the degree. May I ask the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Maura Lester McSweeney will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts and Master of Science in the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Science, College and Grad, College of Arts and Science Graduate School to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Arts or Master of Science. Nazem Arilmuz will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences Graduate School to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Marina Marin will accept the degree on behalf of the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Laws in the Law School to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Laws. Baruch Makeda Shimaliza Eshete will accept the degree for the class.
May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Laws in the Law School to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Laws. Alexander Porter will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the James A. Woods S.J. College of Advancing Studies to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Anthony M. Crowley will accept the degree for the class. You may be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in the James A. Woods S.J. College of Advancing Studies to please rise. Father President, I am honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements and I hereby certify they are eligible for the degree of Master of Science. Spencer Constable will accept the degree for the class. the candidates for the degree of Master of Social Work in the School of Social Work to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and I hereby certify that they're eligible for the degree of Master of Social Work. Suzanne Perdue Gallo will accept the degree for the class. the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the School of Social Work to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they're eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Ju Yong Kong will accept the degree for the class.
May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in the Carroll School of Management to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Lauren Waddell will accept the degree for the class. Okay, hey, sit down please, sit. <laughs> May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration, Master of Science in Finance, and Master of Science in Accounting in the Carroll School of Management to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Business Administration and Master of Science. Sonia Furtado will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Management Studies in the Carroll School of Management to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Management Studies. Bo Ram Doe will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in the William F. Cannell School of Nursing to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all of the requirements and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Emma Ellen Adcock will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Science and Specialty Certificates in the William F. Cannell School of Nursing to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements and I hereby certify 
that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Science and for additional specialty certificates. Rachel Nicole Lahoulier will accept the degree for the class. Candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in the William F. Cannell School of Nursing to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they're eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Denise Testa will accept the degree for the class. I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the Carolyn A. and Peter S. Lynch School of Education to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Johnny Ho will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degrees of Master of Education, Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Science in Teaching, and the Certificate of Advanced Educational Specialization in the Lynch School of Education to please rise. <laughs> Father President, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degrees of Master of Education, Master of Arts, Master of Science, and the Certificate of Advanced Educational Specialization. Kimberly Alderman will accept the degree for the class. Ask the candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education in the Lynch School of Education to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education. Kevin Jin will accept the degree for the class.
May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Sacred Theology, Master of Arts, Master of Theological Studies, Master of Divinity, and Master of Theology in the School of Theology and Ministry to please rise. <laughs> By the President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and I hereby certify are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Sacred Theology, Master of Arts, Master of Theological Studies, Master of Divinity, and Master of Theology. Amy Marie Northrup will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Licentiate in Sacred Theology in the School of Theology and Ministry to please rise. <laughs> By the President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements of the Ecclesiastical Faculty at Boston College and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of licentiate in sacred theology. Wojtek Moransky of the Society of Jesus will accept the degree for his class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of, of Doctor of Sacred Theology in the School of Theology and Ministry to please rise. <laughs> By the President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements of the Ecclesiastical Faculty at Boston College. And I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Sacred Theology. Reverend Wayne Belschner will accept the degree for the class. By virtue of the power invested in me by the trustees of Boston College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates who have been presented to me by their deans and declare them respectively bachelors, masters, and doctors in their appropriate disciplines. And by virtue of the power invested in me by the chancellor of the ecclesiastical faculty of, at Boston College, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates who have been presented to me by the Dean of the School of Theology and Ministry and declare them awarded the degree of Licentiate in Sacred Theology and Doctor of Theology. Congratulations to all. ask Lauren Waddell to join us for the presentation of the Edward H. Finnegan of the Society of Jesus Award. The 
The Edward H. Finnegan SJ Award is presented each year to the graduating senior who best exemplifies the university's motto, ever to excel. This year's recipient is a summa cum laude graduate of the Carroll School of Management Honors Program. She is an academic All-American and was captain of women's ice hockey club team. She has worked with the CSOM Honors Programs First Serve Project, and Skate with Eagles, an outreach to special athletes. Today, it is with acknowledgement of her accomplishments, generous spirit, and commitment to others that Boston College confers the 2017 Edward H. Finnegan SJ Award on Lauren Waddell. Anne Riley Fink, class of 1966, president of the Alumni Association, will now address the graduates of the class of 2017. On behalf of more than 170,000 Boston College alumni throughout the world, and as president of the Alumni Association, it is my special pleasure to welcome all of you, the class of 2017, to the Boston College Alumni Association family. We trust that your Jesuit education at Boston College has prepared you, both intellectually and spiritually, to seek ever to excel and to truly be men and women for others. We trust, too, that you will be an influence for good in all your future endeavors. The Boston College Alumni Association is ready to assist you in every way possible and encourages your active involvement in the programs and activities of the Alumni Association from this day forward so that together we can carry on the rich traditions that characterize our great university. Best wishes and congratulations to one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to please rise for the benediction that will be offered by His Eminence Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Archbishop of Boston. And please remain standing for the singing of the alma mater along with the university chorale. Earlier this year, Pope Francis visited with students at Rome's Trey University. Rather than speaking to them about the importance of working hard at their studies or their prospects for professional careers, the Holy Father spoke of faith, hope, and commitment to service. Pope Francis cautioned the students not to be influenced by attitudes of discouragement and mistrust that are becoming increasingly prevalent in our societies. He urged them not to be without hope, emphasizing that our hope in God is the motivation for moving forward in life and our achievements in all fields of endeavors. The Holy Father noted that the sense of fulfillment brought about by the accumulation of material goods is only momentary and not the source of true happiness. He spoke of the importance of service to others, especially the neediest in our midst, particularly citing persons, the homeless in need of food and clothing and migrants fleeing violence and persecution. Boston College has a proud, long-standing history of graduates whose success in their work has allowed them to provide support and assistance for the less fortunate among us. Whatever path you choose for your life, always strive to be men and women for others, 
carrying on the tradition established in the name of St. Ignatius by shining the light of Christ in the world around us. Let us pray. Dear God, we call your blessings down upon all who graduate and receive honorary degrees today. May they always recognize you as the source of all gifts. May they seek ever to excel in all that they do in life and go forward in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This concludes the university commencement.